We might make a start because we do have a lot of people here and I'm conscious that everyone has made a super effort to get here on time. So good afternoon. My name is Clinton Milroy and head up the marketing here at Ed Rollo. And I just wanted to start by welcoming you all and thanking you for making uh, time this, this afternoon on a Tuesday after a long weekend. Hopefully everyone had a, a lovely break there. Um, to join us this afternoon. I will be handing over to Jason in a moment, who's gonna run us through this session. I can see Jason there on camera waving to us all. I just wanna begin though by acknowledging that we are meeting on the traditional um, lands of the Woiwurrung uh, Wurundjeri and Woiwurrung people here, um, at least for us here in the Melbourne CBD on Exhibition Street at Edrolo HQ. Um, they're the lands we're on, but I understand, as I said, we've got people from all across Victoria, I can see from the introduction. So um, acknowledge that we're, we're joining from lands across Victoria here today. Um, just in terms of general housekeeping, we have got the chat there going. If you haven't already, jump on in and introduce yourself, your school and where you're dialing in from this afternoon. It's just great to see where everyone um, is calling in from. We would love um, if you could hold your questions for Jason until the end of the session. It will just certainly make um, the flow a lot easier rather than having to stop and start. Um, so just post your questions um, at the end. We'll make sure that there are times for that. So just note them down throughout the session and then jump on in towards the end. Um, I did also just want to share um, some exciting news just very briefly with you all today. Um, we have uh, just launched our new Year 7 resources for um, maths and science with humanities coming later this year. They all um, align to the curriculum and um, available for schools in Victoria. So if you are interested or your colleagues are interested in resources for maths and science, then please do um, just drop us a line. There'll be contact details at the end. And we did just um, flash past the screen that has our um, social channel details on it and I see it's back up there again so if you're not already following us along on uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube um, please do because we're certainly sharing more and more on those channels particularly things like the videos from this session this afternoon, tips and tricks on using Ed Rolio. We'll also be running some competitions and giveaways really soon so there's lots of stuff happening on those channels so please follow along. So um, without further ado I am going to hand over to Jason who is going to take you through um, the rest of the session up until um, five o'clock this afternoon so thank you all. Thank you, Clinton. So um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Is that okay, Clinton? I'm all good. I don't want to- I can hear you loud and clear. I don't, don't want to pretend to talk for an hour and then realize that no one could hear me. Yeah. Right, so um, <clears throat> the aim of today is um, to introduce myself first of all. Um, and I, I feel really privileged to be where I am and the experiences that I've had. So um, what I don't want to do is, um, sort of the classic teacher who's not prepared anything and just read through everything uh, verbatim. So obviously you've got a set of these slides they were sent to you earlier. Um, so I think the main thing you can be certain of is that um, I know my craft. Um, the Probably the biggest and best thing um, for um, yourselves and Ed Rell is that I was a principal author of the sort of design, um, which again, it's sort of unfair to call it principal because there's a humongous team of about 12 people. Um, there was roughly about two and a half thousand sets of information that we went through. So I sort of see myself really as a collator. Um, but what I also obviously can um, pass on to you all is sort of the understanding of the new sort of design compared to the old and um, sort of the subtle changes. And obviously the disclaimer is that I do not speak on behalf of VCAR, I speak on behalf of myself and Ed Rollo. But obviously, as you can see, um, I've got a lot of experience in the classroom um, and at VCAR and outside of the classroom as well. So um, I don't take it personally because I know I was part of a huge, fantastic team at VCAR, but again, um, it would be nice to see your faces. Uh, as to what your expression was. Um, I'm hoping you saw it as a natural evolution towards um, sustainability and green chemistry rather than a revolution. Uh, you may well have thought that the um, draft study design was a revolution, but the reason behind that was obviously with the revolution, everybody's feedback actually um, sort of showed us what was important and what wasn't important. And obviously the periodic table 
um, as we pretty much knew, is fundamental to chemistry. So there was method behind the slight madness, but uh, as they say, any publicity is generally welcome and it helped um, in terms of the number of and the amount of feedback increased massively once we got into the newspapers. So in a way, it was very, very positive for us. So um, what I am just going to get rid of this. So what I'm intending on doing is understanding, I'm going to concentrate on year 11. I've given you some information about the year 12 um, and concentrate on the changes, especially the green chemistry and sustainability and how that is embedded throughout. Um, talk about how we are embracing and embedding learning and teaching enhancements in our resources, and then just some information with regard to preparing your students for year 12. And obviously the preparation for year 12 is woven and embedded throughout um, the year 11 course, especially the Ed Rolo resources. So um, unit one. So this top line here is really good because it gives you an idea of a teacher, you know, what's the big new thing is society. So it's that application of chemistry in the real world to society. And again, if you have a look in terms of what's removed versus uh, what's added, what you may have initially thought when you saw the study design is that it's bigger, um, but it's not really bigger. It's just more explicit. So there was more specific language used in order to help make um, the key design points really, really explicit rather than anything implicit. So as you can see here, metal recycling, which is the first introduction really to green chemistry and sustainability is there with regard to linear versus circular. Chromatography is back, fantastic uh, practicals, RF is back. And then slight changes with regard to um, organic compounds. But again, that leads and links beautifully into year 12. Um, so that again, a lot of the content in year 12 can be covered really, really nicely in year 11 with just a tiny little bit of extension required. So society is a big thing there in terms of especially the effect of polymers in society. So that's an overview of unit one. But again, it's still regarded as properties. Last unit one was pretty much bonding and properties. What we try to do is make it a lot more active. So reactions, you'll see a lot of reactions, which is obviously great for encouraging practical work and other types of activities. So unit two, again, slimmed down quite a lot, very similar. Uh, it's about chemical reactions again, the different types, and then the measurements and analysis. Um, as you can see here, antacids was introduced. And the reason for the antacids was introduced is because this um, medical chemistry appears in year 12. It's also something we do a lot. I don't know about you, but I've used it a lot in classrooms, whether it's in the study design or not. Very easy to get hold of and very easy to compare and do some great prac work with. Again, applications in society. So there's that society link again, uh, which it will come to more light when we do green and sustainability. Uh, precipitation reactions is new. A lot of water around the world, especially fresh water, is no longer fresh. So that seemed a, a logical step in terms of sustainable and green chemistry to talk about the removal of impurities. Um, general gas equation was taken out of year 12 because it's one of those where the, the percentage that get it correct is so high. Uh, it doesn't add a huge amount of value, but it does add a lot of value in year 11 when you get to teach students um, reasonably decent equations, changing formulas, um, changing units. And basically it's great practice for, <coughs> excuse me, for year 12. So I'll have a quick look um, and see if there's any questions. Um, let's have a look. No, that's all good. I'll get rid of that. Right. So. Um, Next step then is not to push that. So this is what we would have done. Obviously, we would have had a chat. Um, I've got people to introduce themselves, but obviously that's not happening because we're online. Because um, obviously, it's really, really interesting to see how you think the new study design will fit in your school, in your classroom. So here are the 49. Um, I really wanted to get 50 because obviously the study design is 50 hours. Um, even though these are not meant to be done per hour, there's 49 lessons. The color coding there is obviously taking um, each topic heading in the study design. So what we've absolutely made sure we've done is it's 100% aligned to the study design. Um, and therefore, there's no real interpretation or anything required. 
what we have done is put our science research, um, our practical investigations chapter at the back, and I'll explain to you why we've done that in a moment. So they're the 49 lesson titles. Um, there's not a huge amount of brand new, but what I do think there is, is the philosophy, the way in which it's taught has always got that sort of understanding of sustainability um, and accountability. So the new study design. So again, even if I were involved in the writing of this one and, and, and the previous one, I still do not speak on behalf of VCAR. Um, so, but obviously my, my opinion is possibly valuable because I was there uh, through the last study design and the study design yet to come. So the big difference is aligning with all other study designs and having 10% more SAC. Um, so it's basically 20 hours, 10 per unit, 20 hours per year. Um, so other big difference is very, very explicit key knowledge dot points. So nothing is hidden anymore. So um, if you look in the year 12, you'll see that the concentration quotient Q is actually now in the study design, whereas before it wasn't, but it was expected to be in answers. So if it's, for instance, electron configurations and it doesn't say of ions, then it's only as it says of atoms. So it's really important then that you do get to cut the study design down by looking at this implicit, so explicit study design points and get rid of stuff that maybe you've always done and you think, and that's obviously one thing that's really important is to just take the study design as explicit. Nothing is hidden anymore. Um, connections between year 11 and 12 um, have been improved. Applications have been improved. And obviously the big two are sustainability and green chemistry, which have been embedded throughout. And I'll basically be able to help you navigate where, when, what, and how, and why with those. So tasks, first of all. So if you think the, the old tasks, um, the nine old tasks there, um, and the two that are now removed, plus the new ones. So um, a huge increase in variety, but the one thing that um, sort of surprised me, um, because I'm obviously, I've been, I've been teaching for 26 years until January, is the test comprising multiple choices gone. Um, and that's where as a, uh, a company we've responded fantastically well to creating lots of different opportunities to rank kids, which is ultimately, excuse me, what the SACs are about, as well as obviously engagement, um, et cetera. So these particular tasks here, so there's your old tasks, here's your new tasks. Um, how will these tasks influence and assess your students now their structured questions are gone? So again, if we'd have been on site, this is what we'd have done. But again, it's something really to think about is now that the old fashioned structured questions are gone, you know, what would you possibly do? How are you going to replace it? How do you think it will affect the learning in your classroom? So um, looking at, just a minute, I seem to have lost. That's all right. So how are we supporting the, just let me get rid of that. So how are we supporting the increased number of tasks and styles? So we've got 44 lessons which are based on content. Now, what we're doing is every single lesson. So as it currently stands, there's about 20-ish um, practicals which are available to download as a PDF on um, online platform. And uh, the 44 lessons, which exclude the five science investigation lessons, will each have at least one or two activities. Now, of those task types, which I showed you previously, which are here, apologies, um, are here, those 15 times, what we will do is each, so this is from a particular lesson on reactivity of metals, we will be providing downloadable um, Word documents which will be very specific and you'll see they will be aligned to a task type and a key science skill. So every single lesson will have, so the 44 lessons will have a minimum of one of those in each, possibly two. So there's going to be a, a fantastic resource that covers all the different types of um, task types as, as well as see key science skills. Obviously lab notes, um, technical notes and risk assessments will also be involved. So that will then, instead of doing, say, one huge big task to prepare students to say year 12 or a SAC, we're actually talking more about every single lesson. There will be some opportunity to be active and 
um, address one of these task styles, <coughs> as well as addressing the key science skills. So rather than it be separate, it's basically embedded throughout every single lesson. So it's very bite-sized, small amounts that you can basically build. So how are we supporting the increased number of test styles? <coughs> so basically, we have got our section on key science skills, and they will be um, very clear. And again, they will cover all of them, all of the key science skills, at least two, two times with um, loads of applications in there. And the whole point is, instead of expecting kids to just know science, to understand key science skills as a chapter, they actually understand them by doing them. And sometimes the best way to learn is to actually not know what you're doing, have a go at it, and then you're going to figure it out. But there's going to be lots and lots of evidence-based practice going on with kids learning key science skills. And the best thing is they're going to be really, really visible to the students in the activities as well as in these questions. So um, here's an example then of what the task would look like. This is just a mock-up. Again, it would tell you the type. It would also tell you the key science skills. So obviously, if you had a list of key science skills, you'd literally be able to tick them off. And then this will, if a student's struggling, before they do this prac, they could have a look at the section in the textbook, which refers specifically to what they're going to be doing. So in terms of preparation, you know what type of task it is, you know what type of key science skills you're addressing. And then obviously, the learning, hopefully, will be much more targeted and much more directed rather than all kids love pracs, but when you sometimes ask them, did you learn anything? They're like, oh, no, no, but we loved it. We had great fun. This will make it much more targeted and focused uh, in terms of an outcome with task types and key science skills. And obviously, these task types and key science skills will be used again in year 12. So you're training students little and often and giving them lots of experiences. They tend to be called activities, not practicals, because not every single um, activity is practical based. Some of them may well be online. So how are we supporting the explicit nature of the study design? Um, so like the study design, there'll be guiding questions. So instead of pupils um, having a study design to look at, they'll have a guiding question, which is really, really specific. So students always know what the outcome is. There's um, very, there's not tons of guiding questions, but the guiding questions that are there in the content are very, very specific, like those particular examples there. So it makes, the study design and the learning intention, it makes it very visible um, and very easy for students to understand what they're meant to be learning. Also, with regard to images, nearly every image we're going to try and put in is an actual image. So it actually, in case students don't get to see what a magnesium ribbon looks like, there's always going to be a picture. <coughs> right, connections. So connections is another thing from year 11 to 12 that's been improved, the spiral nature of the study design. So what we do is have various levels of links, whether it be the lesson link, um, whether it be a question from a previous lesson um, or another lesson, or whether it's a link to year 12. So what the students will always know is, you know, how does this relate to another topic? Where am I actually going to go with it? So again, it just brings those links together. So how are we supporting more cross unit connected SD? Again, so here, what will make sure it's really, really visible. So here's some examples of how, you know, the organic that you teach in year 11, how does it transfer to year 12? What are the subtle differences? So those will be made really visible with those links. So as a teacher, um, you know, if you wanted to teach a bit of the year 12 and year 11, you'd know exactly what it was uh, and what level to take it to. So again, that's just an example of the connections and the mapping that we'll make visible in our book. Um, and again, there's more, more there with regard to um, chromatography and also um, polymers, both biological and non-biological. Um, more applications. So what we'll do is continue to have as many real life applications as possible. I think um, as been in the classroom a long time, the more reality based you make it, the better it is for kids to understand and make connections themselves. So we'll continue to do as many of those applications as we can. <coughs> so sustainability, I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute but again we have questions there that will um, have sustainability in it and the one thing that we're really proud of at Ed Rollo is all our practicals um, are going to be as sustainable as possible so all the activities we plan will have at least more than one option if that equipment is not available and we'll also be looking at sustainable suppliers sustainable chemicals alternatives so <coughs> 
we ourselves, excuse me, are going to try and be as green and sustainable as we possibly can with regard to our activities, especially the practical ones. Uh, as again, I've been ahead of science two or three times, ahead of chemistry quite a few times. And I think it's really good to actually start thinking of what's the best way that we can minimize our impact on the environment and waste and waste disposal and actually be practicing what we preach as we use these activities with our pupils. So sustainability, so there are the, the 17 sustainability development goals. Nine of them are particularly relevant to the VC study design. So there are the examples of the ones that tend to be embedded throughout. Again, there's nothing specifically separate on this. This just gives you an idea that we chose the ones we thought were relevant to VCE chemistry. Now, in terms of sustainability, the first time it really appears in year 11 is in unit one, area of study three, and it appears really, really big. It comes in very, very thick and fast. So as you can see, unit one, area of study three, outcome three, um, is based on sustainability and sustainable concepts. So again, just in your head and your planning, you think actually you've got till, you know, maybe um, halfway through term two or something like that before you're going to come across it. But it's definitely worth thinking about early in terms of what options, what possibilities there are. So that's the first time that it really appears. Now, um, in our textbook, we pretty much, once we get onto metal recycling, that's when we've introduced. So again, rather than do it all in one go, um, green chemistry principles and sustainability will be woven throughout um, the Edrolo product rather than just left to outcome three, um, because the whole point is it should be done um, pretty much a little bit every week rather than just left and um, chunked into a study. Thank you. So um, unit two, area study three, since one outcome threes, and what we've got here is um, just to give you an idea that it's more about measurement. So the first outcome for year 11 is about sustainability. And the second one, which is a bit more conventional, a bit more traditional that we're used to, is <clears throat> um, quantitative. So next one is so sustainability, green chemistry. So here's an outline of where green chemistry is. Now, if you have a look at, um, for instance, design for efficiency, that appears um, in three places. So prevention of waste, and that's that's no accident. So when we've done, uh, we've written the first few chapters of the book, and we've got prevention of waste, you can see that that actually is one of the first that comes in. All of them are addressed. So these are the green chemistry principles that we have pretty much condensed from a list which are woven throughout the study design. And again, the key with the students and our materials is to not just, I remember when I first started teaching um, in VC in 2012, and I picked up the Heinemann book and there was a big section, I think on green chemistry, and it didn't play a huge part really in my teaching. Whereas hopefully now that this is embedded throughout and you can see where it's mapped, it gives you a really good idea of trying to weave it into lessons as you go rather than leaving it separate. So these are obviously the year 12. So it gives you an idea of the fact that you have a lot in unit three um, and a lot in unit four as well. So again, it, it's spread evenly. Um, so this is a really useful list because it gets your head around, you know, when the green and the sustainable actually come in and it's a little bit everywhere. So <clears throat> this was, again, a question that I've got us to discuss, which is how you see fitting into your lessons and your assessments. And the original draft that we put out was very, very, very heavy on purposely so with sustainability and green chemistry to see what you know, and, and ultimately, as we all agreed, chemistry has to come through, but it's very important in terms of accountability with regard to green chemistry and sustainability. And it's sort of a, it's not a huge change, but it's definitely a philosophical change as a teacher that you've got to find those opportunities where relevant to put in green chemistry and sustainability. As obviously as chemists, there has to be accountability for the material world that is produced by <laughs> chemists and industrialists. So those were the sort of six main changes of the six bits of evidence um, with regard to 
the study design and the study design changes. So ultimately, differentiation, connections, engagement, and the world around us. So that's the sort of the theme that we've got from the study design. And that's the theme that we're putting in all of our resources. Um, differentiation is obviously humongous. It's not just about those kids who, you know, get the top marks. It's about kids who get 20s, 21, but really enjoy chemistry and really want to do it for whatever career they want. And I think it's really important that differentiation is there and visible. Obviously, the connections to the real world, active engagement, absolutely crucial. And that's where the activities have come in. And obviously, the, the reality check of the world around them, relevant to them, helps learners. So what we're adding to help the study design um, is essential prior knowledge. So as you know, students come in just because they did it last week or the week before or the year before, it doesn't really matter. So there's a, a small section that will just highlight essential prior knowledge and there'll be some really quick high success questions at the back so that when students start a lesson, it literally take two or three minutes. If there's any issues, you can easily overcome those issues. There could be some misconceptions. There could be some gaps. They could have missed a lesson. <coughs> and again, they're really high success questions so they can really guide students to all oh, right okay i forgot that but now i know so each lesson will have a few of those in it next one is a misconception box um misconception all metals rust is one of my pet hates so what you'll see is misconceptions will not appear late in a lesson hidden in a the question they will be bold and beautiful and in the margins and really clear from the very beginning teaching misconceptions is sometimes better than teaching the answers because you understand so many things that possibly couldn't be the correct answer because you understand the misconceptions. So they will prevent barriers again, which for um, the maybe lower and medium level learners will help. So misconception box is going to be very, very clear. Um, differentiation. So we're going to have um, progress questions. So you have a huge amount of content and then you have questions which are uh, mixed up. What you'll now get is the content in a small bite size with progress questions, which again are really guiding and very, very formative and very, very high success. So before you move past that, it's a sort of really good stopgap of students so that they know where they're at. So it's not 45 minutes of content and then questions. It might be 10 minutes of content and then you get those progress questions. So you can highlight and differentiate and get misconceptions very, very quickly. So spiciness ratings will, uh, they're currently in the maths book. I think they're a fantastic idea. They're visible now. All our questions were already scaffolded, but I think what's important for students is that when they do a question, they know if it's a low, a medium or a high demand. So the questions will have a chili as to one, two or three, which again helps with confidence and scaffolding, um, but it's visible. So students know if it's a harder question or not. Keen to investigate. So um, extension opportunities. So again, you can differentiate at the bottom and the middle, but I think it's also important to differentiate at the top. So for instance, in this lesson, rusting, uh, which you do in year 12, which is a, a really good electrolytic cell, um, sorry, galvanic cell <coughs> with water. Um, and obviously you can do experiments with salt, et cetera. So again, there's some extensions there, which are really good for the top level kids. If you want to prompt some further discussion and give them some more work. Engagement, obviously, we improve engagement by having these types of activities, all of them linked to the specific, specific task types and also to the key science skills. And they will be really clear and visible. So as a teacher, you will be able to track. Um, obviously, the digital logbook is going to be a dream now because all of them are there in Word. They're all editable. The risk assessments are going to be done. So actually, kids making a digital logbook uh, and you tracking the types of skills and tasks that they've done is going to be very, very simple and streamlined. So we've also gone for a visual hook. Um, <clears throat> myself, what I'm very proud of my world record for the largest explosive soap bubble. And there's really, you know, one of the keys to chemistry is to get the kids hooked, to, to do demonstrations, obviously taking all proper precautions. And therefore what the every single lesson will lead with some form of hook uh, and ho hopefully encourage all the kids, all teachers to do maybe a few more demos. Uh, because, for instance, you know, why does potassium explode in water? Uh, and it's great for the kids to actually want to see these things as well and get them more engaged in the active side of chemistry. Um, <clears throat> so the first page 
is almost like an administration mini hub, we call it. So you've got the key definitions, essential prior knowledge, where you've been, where you are, and where you're going to go. So again, instead of having to look at the key terms and definitions at the back, which will still be there, they're in the exact right place. And again, you can see the guiding questions here, which are very, very clear what the learning outcome is going to be. So that will hopefully improve the user experience <clears throat> because everything is in a really specific location. It takes a lot less time to find. Right. Preparation for year 12. So if you look, these are the outcomes for units three and four. And if you look at all those keywords there, those are the key words that are really visible in a lot of activities. They're really visible in the book. And therefore, that activity, the activities really, and the logbook um, is the best preparation you could possibly do for year 12. Because what we want our students to be able to do is to think for themselves, design, make mistakes, analyze, then evaluate, and then and think of qualitative and quantitative. And the, and the best way to do that is very little very often which is why these activities are going to be absolutely fantastic for students as well as for teachers and the all important lab technicians as well um, given that we use risk assess and integrate all of that and make it very very easy for your school to adapt it slightly and then sign it off and be ready to go so <clears throat> hopefully <clears throat> um maybe you're number three now I was I was number two for a while when you're involved working for VCAR. If any of you have ever worked for VCAR before, you think, oh my God, is this ever going to end? Um, but he did. So um, what I'll do now is have a quick look um, at the questions. So the question is, the unit three and four SAC types are set. Do you have unit one and two tasks in each of the styles? that will be required in unit three and four. What we will do is there won't ever be one specific task that fits everything that you do in year 12. As I've said before, hopefully I've answered this, that all of these, um, let me get rid of that, all of these, which are the unit three and four outcomes and tasks in terms of the key words, they will be, um, done throughout the activities in year 11 and that's why i've put it's the best preparation for year 12 is doing year 11 course which obviously sounds like a no-brainer but it's really really visible now in terms of what skills and what science processes they're going to learn in year 11. right i think So question, um, so there are lots and lots of tasks which talk about innovation. So there will be lots and lots of dream time possible where students can be given a task and one of them, it's obviously innovation. So again, they, they see chemical innovation. So there's absolutely a lot of these tasks. Again, um, I'm not gonna go all the way back to it because it's right at the beginning. But again, if you look, there's lots and lots of tasks that are open-ended. And I think that's absolutely fundamental to chemistry is that they're actually open-ended. And we'll obviously be providing with at least two of every different type, um, some of which obviously will be open-ended. So, um, questions. So I'll open the Q&A. If people want to put some questions in. I'm more than happy to answer. And obviously, um, my email address, I think, is... Um, just let me get rid of this. Email address should be at the end. Maybe it's not. It's disappeared. My email address was there, um, which is just jasonwallacetroller.com. Um, I don't really want to talk about the unit three, four, because um, I, I would much rather concentrate on the other. But again, I've given you that information there um, in terms of unit three and four for you to look through. So I'll just have a look and see. There you go. And obviously, I'm, I'm in a good position to help um, because I have a really good sort of idea uh, of how it's meant to be. Um, and again, when you work for VCAR, 
it never ends. So even now there's lots and lots of questions about the study design. And one thing that I'm always saying is that it's, it's explicit. So therefore what you used to do, if it's not written like that anymore, it's different. And that's where you've got to be careful not to hold on to the old um, because you'll probably struggle for time if you do. I think we've got a couple of questions in the chat, Jason, one from Eleanor and one from Robin. I, just I can read them out to you if you can't see them. Um, so I, I answered the Robin one, which was the, oh, the perfect. pondering. So that's where some of our tasks will be innovation. So there will be no specific answer and kids will have to design and think for themselves. Uh, and was there another question that I missed? Just from Just oh, year nine. Yeah, so year 12. So obviously it's this is where every activity that we'll have um, with a specific task will also have accompanying questions with them. So although you can't do structured questions, the basis will be a very specific task addressing very specific key science skills, but there's always going to be some low, medium, high level questions that will test kids' ability to think apply and then almost innovate themselves so hopefully you're teaching a much higher level so when it talks about practice for the exam um you know vcar have made a really important decision here that they've removed all of the structured questions from all of the vc sciences exams for year 12 and therefore what that means is companies like ourselves are reacting to that by producing these activities which to me will be probably much more engaging and much more higher level and much more challenging than any structured questions because they're going to be attached to activities that they've done so you're hopefully you're doing that medium and high order much more often than giving kids multiple choice questions and short answer questions so although it looks like a step back um you know that is our one huge huge massive um like increase in time is to get these activities right to just make them so simple for students and teachers that the learning is going to be hopefully better than any practice exam you could ever write. I see also there's another question in the Q&A from Marnie um, about PDFs being available, which might be a question for you, Jess, or Jason, I'm not sure. So the pracs, the pracs will be Word. So the activities, at the minute, the practicals are PDFs and they're available online all you have to do is go down to the bottom and you'll see investigations and you click on it and they pop up but in terms of the activities that we will be producing this year they will be downloadable as word documents so therefore making a logbook is going to be a dream <coughs> we've also got a lesson sample of next year's textbook which we will send around um, to everyone that's joined us this afternoon after this along with the recording um, to make sure that everybody has access to that as well. Nice. So we'll be sending out that uh, sample along with the video recording from today. So we'll just put another call out for any other questions. Now is your chance to get Jason while we've got him. Anything else that's burning that you want to know that hasn't been addressed? Um, we have put, um, Jess has put Jason's email address into the chat there. You can see it, Jason Wallace at adroller.com. So you can send that through afterwards if you prefer. But um, we have got another minute if anyone wants to ask any questions. And then I think we might ask Dion to give us a quick demo walkthrough. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm on the line. Great. And maybe that gives people some thinking time as well to be plotting their questions. We can come back one more time and do one more check when you're when you're done, Dion. Yep, that sounds great. I'll uh, I'll share my screen. Thank you, Jason, for that um, webinar and all that information. I'm going to share my screen with you all. So just very, very quickly, I know it's the end of the day, but I just wanted to have your attention for about three minutes whilst I just run through um, for those of you who haven't seen what this textbook actually looks like, what this resource looks like on the Edrollo platform, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But essentially, we have textbooks for 14 other areas uh, in VCE 11 and 12. 
Um, and we also have, I think, as Clinton alluded to at the start, we've got year seven resources for science and maths and also humanities coming as well. And the idea is that we'll be moving into future um, years into eight, nine and 10 and they'll, eight will actually be, year eight will actually be ready next year as well. Um, we're running trials of all of these and I wanted to tell you a little bit about those trials, but I also wanted to show you, Jason sort of run through the, the how this sort of amazing resource has been put together, but how this actually looks on, on, um, on Edrollo when you're using it as a teacher. Um, but before I show you as a teacher, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you are a, a student. Um, so I've got chemistry, just as an example, three, four um, textbook up here at the moment. And this is a student view. This student's just sort of started cracking into to some of this content. So when a student wants to actually do the questions online, it's a really, really rich experience. And so here's an example. So the student will click on uh, one of the sets of questions from the topic. And these questions that are here, they're exactly the same that are in the textbook, but they've been digitized. So here's an example of what the student sees. They see a list of all their questions, these theory review questions, exam style questions, and they can click on any of these and do them online. So here is one question that uh, a student can do. It's a multi-choice question. They can click into uh, what they think is the answer, the correct answer. And then for every question in the textbook, there's a corresponding video solution online. So here's an example. Us, which of the following half equations represents the reduction reaction that's occurring between the... And then they indicate whether they're confident or not in their understanding of the question they've completed. So that's multi-choice question. Then for short answer questions online, the student can enter their answer here. And once again, a video solution guiding them through the correct answer so that picks apart the question. To say which of these two... And then the student actually gets uh, a checklist. Um, so for this particular question, they can work through that checklist and look in the exemplar response where that is where that is from. So this is really encouraging independent learning for students. It's meaning that you as teachers don't have to mark every bit of work, but you can come into the back end and you can actually see, and I'll show you that in a minute, the data um, from your class. So once again, at the bottom of every question, a student is asked if they're confident or not in their understanding of the question. The last thing I'll show you is, so that's from the student perspective. From the teacher perspective, the data that you get is incredibly rich. So a lot of you will know that there are videos that are linked to every topic and you can track that, um, that uh, how many videos the students have watched and the, and the tests that they've completed through class progress. Well, here, this is where you can see the, the textbook questions that students have completed. So I actually preloaded this. So here is a, um, all of the questions for designing galvanic cells as an example and you've got the student names, you've got all of the questions up here and you can actually see what the students are understanding and need help with. So this is really, really rich data that you can, um, that you can sort of apply your teaching with. And then you can even dive into individual questions and you sort of get a list of who needs help with particular questions. And that allows you to go into the data and see, right, you know, we just, I just showed you that checklist before. This is the checklist breakdown of that class for that particular question. So here's the sort of the start of the question up here. You can view the question as a teacher here. You can even go in and see what the answers are, but this gives you some really rich data on who's completing the questions, who's understanding the questions, and then go into granular detail of what the students' responses were and how they completed those checklists. Uh, and the same is for sort of the multi-choice questions as well. So uh, yeah, a lot of Edrollo's um, uh, teachers that are actually have authored this textbook have used the Edrollo um, online platform and it's, incredibly rich in terms of what it gives you. So yeah, you've seen from Jason, the study design changes, how I've incorporated that into the textbook. Well, this is what we're doing with the online platform. So the exciting thing for, um, for you is that you can actually trial one of our textbooks. So you can trial the chem textbook, the one, two textbook this year with your students. Uh, you won't be able to trial for the new study design uh, because that um, we're sort of finalizing that, but you can trial the current textbook with your whole class and it's completely free. So the idea is that you set aside your existing textbook for an area of study, and then um, you can keep track of your, your class's progress. You can set them questions, just how I showed you. And if you confirm that you're going ahead with our textbook for 2023, this eight week trial, sort of eight to 10 week trial for the area of study that you choose will actually extend access for the rest of this year. So it means you get six months, I guess, free to use our textbook in anticipation of using it next year. If you would like to trial one of our textbooks, oh, by the way, after that trial, if you don't want to continue using it next year, that's totally fine. You can just, we'll just switch off the trial for you and your students. By the way, that includes a physical book that we'll send you as well. If you'd like to trial our, our textbook for chem or physics or psych or whatever it is, 
Um, I'll get you to do this now. And I think Jess is going to post this URL. It's a little form, fill it out. We'll reach out to you. We'll organize the trial and it's free and you get to tr yeah, trial it with your students or you can even get your phone out, whip your phone out and uh, um, scan that scan that code. Dion, can I, <clears throat> sorry, Dion, could I just interrupt? I forgot one thing. Yes. The, the alignment between online and textbook now is absolutely supreme. Louise Leonard is actually um, a very experienced teacher and author and has done videos in the past. She's actually on the call with us. Um, and obviously what we're doing now is working together. So they absolutely complement and support each other. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of the alignment now between the online and the, the textbook. Yeah, that's a really good point, Jason. And th thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, I was talking to a teacher earlier today, and one of the things that they were mentioning was that they use the standard Edrollo resource with the videos and the and the formative tests with their students, and they have another textbook they're using, and they really wish that they align. But yeah, there is total synergy. So if you tell your students to watch the videos from 4A in the you know on Edrollo on the online platform, they will be able to flick to their textbook, and it'll be chapter 4A as well. There's a whole bunch of other synergies as well that's really worth checking out in the trial. We have got a question from Anne in the chat. It might be for you, Dion. Will there be a way that students can work on screen with a stylus for the questions? Because typing cal calculations, for example, can be tedious. So, excellent question. It's like you read you've read Ed Rollo's minds. We're currently working on that, um, and that will be something that uh, will be rolled out to sort of all of our all of our products, um, and that will be coming in the coming months. So that's. That and a lot of other changes you'll see to the platform, some really, really exciting changes. And just remember, if you are interested in trialing year seven maths or year seven science, just leave your details in that form as well. And that will be fine. But yes, some really, really great um, uh, new product initiatives that will be happening on the platform and you'll see them. We have a question from Andrea as well, which is about um, the similarities with the year seven book. Are they are the new VC ones similar? You know, they're a blend between textbook and workbook. Yeah, really Andrew, that's a really, really good question. Um, the year seven textbooks will be more textbooks than workbooks. However, the the there'll be a really strong, I guess, workbook component on the online platform. In any event, Andrew, if it's something that you're interested in in having a look at, we can show you in a lot more detail. Um, uh, you know, if you, if you just fill out that form, we can show you in a hell of a lot more detail how how we're going to go about that. But yeah, it, it is a blend in a sense, but we're actually moving more towards more towards that aspect of the workbook being online. Um, yeah. And Marnie has a question. I'm not sure if it's for you, Dion, or for Jason. Mm -hmm. What is your take on students who say they do the questions in their own workbook and hence teacher can't see the data? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and going back to that question before about if students are going to be able to input with a with a stylus, which is something that, that we'll be working towards in the next couple of months. Um, teachers that I have worked with, they typically will, will say to their students, if there are questions that require workings out, they'll have a separate exercise book that's an Ed Rollo exercise book that the students can hand up um, to, the, to the teacher. Uh, and so that's something um, with the stylus you'll be able to capture in the future. But for the moment, uh, yeah, I would say that you want the students at least registering whether they understand or don't understand the question, irrespective of whether you can actually see their workings out. At least um, we want you'd want them to, to, to encourage them to self-reflect on their own learning. And then, um, yeah, you can either capture that in an exercise book or in a few months yeah, on the platform. Yeah, because from a teacher's point of view, ultimately, every single thing in our resources is formative and scaffolded, because um, ultimately, the only thing that they, they really never can learn from is their final exam. So I think it's definitely, I agree with Dion, it's, it's a blend. Um, and everything we do helps kids form knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Last call for any questions. I think we've covered everything in the chat and the Q&A. If anyone has anything else, pop it in now. Um, we will be finishing up in a second, slightly ahead of schedule, which I don't think anyone's going to complain about getting an extra nine minutes back into their evening to go home, cook dinner, pick up the kids, do the mini chores that comprise our evenings. Uh, any last questions? I was just going to mention, we've also got some other mm. PL sessions coming up. Mm. Uh, so please tell your colleagues if you found this useful, hopefully they'll find it useful as well. Um, so yeah, you can, you can register for these 
Um, and I think Jess will pop the registration link, but I believe it's the same link that you would have registered through for this one. Good one. Thanks, Dion. If there are no further questions, then we may say goodbye to you all. And um, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Jason, for running us through the changes there in the study design and how we're going to be addressing them. Hopefully we have answered your questions, but if not, there are numerous ways you can get in touch. Jason's email address is there. There's also the trial form that Dion had up if you're interested in finding out more on that front. Um, and certainly just start through our website or on the social channels, et cetera. It's all been um, shared through uh, the presentation. So thank you all again for making time in your afternoon um, to join us. And we definitely look forward to seeing you again in some other professional learning uh, in the future and stay safe, everyone. Thank you all.